Right, we're back again on the oak raised bed build. I'm trying to remember where we left off, but hopefully it's going to be a bit of a dry day because last time was a washout. All right, let me give you a look at how far we got and then we'll pick up with the new stuff today. So I stopped filming because it was just absolutely hammering it down in the end. But this is how far I got. So I kind of got to the second level, but I've got to do a load more cutting on the oak today. So the idea is that this central pathway leads up. It was going to be equal depth beds all the way around, but I kind of figured it was just so much path that we've made the back bed slightly deeper. And remember, they're going to be up at nearly waist high. We've also got a ton bag of soil being dropped over here today, so hopefully they'll land that down there. Then we've got to start looking at getting the posts in for this triangular bed. Uh, but Matt's actually going to help me today, so there's two of us on it, so it should speed things up a little bit. Right, things are progressing now. We'll have a little bit of a short break. Well, Matt's gone off to get the sandwiches. So whilst he's doing that, I'll show you what we've been up to. So the main bed is almost there now. I say almost, so I've got to do the, I'm kind of picking through to find the best bits for the top. Of course, when you get to the top course, then you see three faces. So you really want to pick the best ones. Now, as far as fixings go, these are your normal landscaping screws. And I have been doing a small eight mil pilot but they will go in, it, you know, with a good impact driver, they will fly in, especially if you're using softwood sleepers, but it does help to pilot. Um, now these are just regular treated uh, outdoor screws, but they're not as good for oak um, as stainless steel. Now you can get these in stainless steel, but special order only. So what I've done is use these because they're great for just tacking it all in really. So I've done one of these per sleeper, on every post. You can see that down here. So we've got the post is concreted in, but really that concrete is doing nothing now because it's just locking it all in. And yes, in an ideal world, stainless steel all the way with oak because it does just eat through. But I was looking at some of the oak sleepers I've got at our place, which I've had for nine years. And some of them had uh, the sawmill stuff stapled on them still, which is just galvanized staples. And they were still sound. Yesterday I pulled those out. And also I've used the regular screws in some and I was looking at, so I reckon even normal uh, outdoor screws you're probably looking at I don't know 10 20 years at least before they failed and even if they did fail in this situation everything is so interlocking because every 90 degree corner adds reinforcement that we're pretty safe but I will just use up all of the stainless steel ones I have got belts and braces this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because we want to cut the angle up there and of course you can't make these cuts on the mitre saw or even the circular saw. So I've plunged in from both sides and I think we're just about right. The next one, the next one's had to be dug down. Still needs to be dug down a bit further. That will go there. You get the idea. The next one will come across to here, to all the way up, Jenga style. Because we've got a gradient going up, this one will end up kind of burying itself in and we'll backfill it with gravel. And then the next one, so we'll actually only end up too high by the time we get to the other side. I think we're just about on target to get done today. I'm hoping we can get everything built in about two hours, three hours. After that, we'll belt sand and sand the whole lot. And then I'm going to run a router around all of the top edges. And then we'll have the soil lifted over and backfill it with some stuff. 
and then we'll put the soil in, then we'll top dress it with compost. So it's all gonna get done. And Liz, Matt's wife's coming back in two days time. seven o'clock and we're just trying to wrap it up today so it's still quite a bit of manual donkey work as far as getting all the soil shifted in but what I'm trying to do is finish off all the tops so we're gonna belt sand them use the orbital sander just kind of get it a bit nicer and um, we're gonna leave them to grey naturally but also what I've done is use the chamfer bit in the router just to take off the edge and I'll do that on the corners coming up as well because nobody wants to knock their shins on there and then that just gives it a little bit more finesse what we are concerned about though is that one bag of soil is going to get lost in here. We've packed it in with uh, some logs at the bottom and they're old logs that weren't any good for firewood anyway. And what that actually does, I can't remember the name of it, Hugo Culture or something like that, I'll put it on the screen, it actually starts breaking down under there and it'll add nutrients to the soil anyway. It's giving us a little bit more backfill. But also there is a bit of warmth generated by that which can help the soil temperature but really we're just doing it to save on soil. Now as this decomposes it will of course sink slightly but that's fine we'll just top it up each year do a top dressing of compost to compensate for that. Now you've seen I put a liner in here I'm going to do a separate video on that. Now I've done um, uh, several different methods in the past and um, one has been using the landscape fabric uh, with a backfill of gravel to keep a a drainage layer there which basically means you've got no soil contact with the timber and that's always the best case scenario this is the uh, lining product that you use for tanking a basement or something like that and it's got this sort of um, egg box type pattern on it so it's not going to compress it's always going to keep a drainage layer behind it so we don't need to fill it with gravel if it causes any issues in the future it's only staples the whole thing can just be pulled up I don't laugh, but I'm a wheelbarrow. This is all I got.
Right, it's getting too dark to see, so I'm gonna leave it there. I said it was gonna be a two and a half day project. I think I was about right. All we're short on really is the soil, and I need to come back up with a chisel to finish off the sort of corners with the route where I finished on the router. Do a bit more sanding, and a little bit of sorting out with the gravel in the pathways, and then we're just about there. Mm -hmm.